Gold is a metal so soft that it can be worked easily, making it one of the first metals to be worked by human hands. Even though the term Stone Age means the age before metal working, gold was being worked in the Stone Age for the making of simple ornaments. Because of the ease of working gold, the website The Visual Capitalist describes gold as the first metal that was widely known to mankind. Its softness, however, made it a poor replacement for stone tools, and so the advent of bronze and alloy of copper and tin was required to start what archaeologists consider to be the second of the three-age system categorizing human prehistory, the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age. While it isn't clear exactly when gold was first worked, the oldest known gold artifact, a small bead found at a site in Bulgaria called Talyunatsite, predates the earliest Bronze Age cultures by at least hundreds of years. Gold was so important to the Egyptian Empire, the first civilization known to smelt gold, that the capstone, called a pyramidion of a pyramid or obelisk, was often covered in gold, and gold adorned the funerary artifacts of kings. But it was the Lydians, a late Bronze Age culture of Anatolia, who were thought to be the first civilization to use gold in coinage in a system of trade, although gold currency may have been developed in China at roughly the same time. Gold was so important to the culture of ancient Greeks that their gods were normally represented dressed in gold, and gold figures prominently in Greek legends, such as the 3rd century epic poem Argonautica, in which Jason and the Argonauts go on a quest to recover the golden fleece, wool made of gold derived from a mythical lamb that was itself a symbol of kingship. In the legendary Judgment of Paris, a golden apple is used as the prize to indicate the most beautiful of the goddesses. The apple created a dispute that led to the Trojan War. To this day, the crux of a dispute might be called the Apple of Discord. Gold figures prominently in the Judeo-Christian religious doctrine, for example with the cautionary tale of the golden calf, and gold being among the gifts of the Magi given to the baby Christ, but gold is often seen as sinful, as a sign of greed among religions, and the hoarding of gold is, for example, denounced in the Koran. Gold became so valued in the ancient world that the growth of empires and conquests was often driven by the quest to attain gold. Caesar was able to pay off the debt of the Roman Empire with the gold taken in the 1st century BC conquest of Gaul. In the 14th century, Mansa Musa, emperor of Mali, went on a pilgrimage to Mecca. On the way, he gave so much gold to the poor that it caused widespread inflation. 200 years later, gold in the New World was motivating Spanish conquest and colonization, causing the collapse of the great Incan and Aztec empires. The resulting influx of gold into Europe caused widespread inflation there, a period called the Price Revolution that, ironically, led to the near bankruptcy of the Spanish crown. A desire to capture some of that Spanish gold resulted in the Golden Age of Piracy, since all good stories involve pirates. The term Golden Age was coined by Greek poets, referring to a time when humanity was first created by the gods, and thus more pure, making its application to piracy somewhat ironic. Since gold, in various forms, has been used as a standard of currency, the weighing of gold has also occurred since antiquity. Thus, as a standard, an item of particular value could be said to be worth its weight in gold, a phrase dating back at least to Roman times. In the 15th century, King Henry II of England officially adopted the method of weighing gold by the troy ounce, still the standard used today, although the system originated earlier in the Middle Ages in Troy, an important trading center in France. The system of delineating gold purity by carats was derived in the 19th century from the German mark. In 1873, the Germans created a 24-carat coin called the mark. As pure gold is too soft to be resilient as a coin, gold coins are most often made with an alloy, usually of copper. The purity of gold is therefore expressed as the number of carats of gold that existed in the 24-carat coin. 18-carat gold is 18 24ths pure gold, the rest other metals, while 24-carat gold is pure. Various discoveries of gold from New Zealand to Canada, California to South Africa, Australia to Brazil led to gold rushes that then drove mass migration, colonization, and the growth of international trade. The use of paper currency to represent gold, something called a gold standard, resulted in the phrase as good as gold. That phrase over time came to mean that an object is genuine, or that a child is well behaved. It's no surprise that gold came to be known as a representation of quality and success. Gold medals have been given by various organizations in recognition of outstanding achievement at least since the 18th century, sometimes with the actual metal value of the gold being the reward. The medal awarded with a Nobel Prize is made of gold. Prior to 1980, they were struck in 23 karat gold. Since then, they have been made struck with 18 karat gold plated with 24 karat gold. And so gold has come to be commonly recognized as a measure of value. We are told, for example, to make new friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other gold. And I suspect that is part of the sentiment behind the fact that YouTube uses gold to represent the Creator Award that is given for a channel that achieves 1 million subscribers, giving me this golden opportunity to thank those friends, both new and old, 
who have helped to make this history guy a success.